What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to talk about how to make real gold and diamond Miami Cuban chains and bracelets. We will talk about everything you need to know about making and selling your own custom Cuban link chains from start to finish and how anyone can start a business selling these with under $1,000. Let's begin. Now first, before we start, a lot of you guys ask me what is the difference between a standard Cuban chain and a Miami Cuban chain. And the difference is regular Cuban chain links are thinner and have a gap between them. And Miami Cuban chains are thicker and the links are very tight. So the first thing we have to do is to get our 3D files. You can get custom 3D files made on websites such as cgtrader.com. All right guys, so we're gonna go on cgtrader.com and we're gonna type in Miami Cuban chain. Hit search. And right here, you guys will see a bunch of results. Now, when you guys make Miami Cuban chains, you have to make sure you make the authentic kind. Make sure you don't download files such as this one right here because there's a large empty area between the links. There's a much higher demand for Miami Cubans and Miami Cubans sell much faster than regular Cuban chains. So this right here is a perfect example of a Miami Cuban chain link. As you guys can see, the links are fat and they're very close together. There's almost no empty area between the links. This right here is another example of a perfect Miami Cuban chain. As you guys can see, the design is a little bit different. The links are a little bit more squarish. If you guys buy a file that has no holes and prongs for diamonds, you can resize it to any size that you want. So you will buy the file once and you can make as many links as you want with it. If you guys make links with diamonds, you will have to make a new design for each diamond size. Some of these files will come with the chain locks, such as this one right here. Let's talk about the three different types of chain locks you guys can make. The first one is called the Lobster Clasp. You guys can buy these from the finding stores in your local jewelry district. You can also purchase them on sites such as RioGrande.com. You can get these wholesale and you will be paying slightly above spot price. Lobster clasps are usually made for small chains. You will simply buy these and when the chain is polished, you will weld them onto the chain. You never want to make these, you always want to buy these. The second type of lock is a regular box clasp such as this one right here. And the third type of lock you can get is a hidden clasp. When you guys make these locks, you don't have to use just round stones. You can get creative and make them out of princess cut stones or baguettes, but this is something you should not be doing when you're first starting out. You can also do the exact same thing and make completely custom chain links. For example, one recent trend is making Cuban link chains with baguettes in the middle and round stones around them. Something like this is very easy to do. You will simply show the 3D designer what you want made, they'll charge you around $20, and then they will send you a file with one link open and one link closed. A lot of times the 3D designers will also let you know how much each link will weigh. So you guys can calculate approximately how much it's going to cost to make your bracelet or necklace. So for example, if four links make up one inch and you want to make a 24 inch chain, you will need a total of 96 links. If each link weighs two grams, that means your chain will weigh around 192 grams. All right guys, so the next step is to pay for our 3D files and download them. Make sure you get STL files because sometimes designers send 3DM files and you cannot use those. You need STL files to print the wax. So let's take a look at the files we purchased. Right here we have the Miami Cuban link. So this right here is a perfect example of how a Cuban link should be made. As you guys can see, one link is closed and the other link is open. When you guys make Cuban chain links, the link should be cut in this area right here. The reason why we're making one link open is so that the bench jeweler or polisher doesn't spend too much time cutting each link. Also cutting each link will make you lose a little bit of gold, so you don't want that. The second thing you have to do is make sure the file is designed with a sprue. This is made so the wax is casted correctly. Sometimes casters do a messy job casting links, which leads to more time being wasted on filing and polishing. So you guys don't want that. All right, so right here is the next file, which is the hidden box class block. Basically, you will take the half link of the beginning of the chain or bracelet and solder or weld it to this part. And then the end half link will be soldered or welded on this part right here. Now, one more thing you guys will have to do is you will have to go on Rhino 3D and you will make a pin which you will also print the wax for and it will be casted in gold. This is very easy to do. I talked about how to do this in the previous video. Right here we have the same lock. The only difference is this one has holes and prongs for diamonds. All right guys, and right here we have the regular square Miami Cuban link. This is the closed link and right here is the open link. Now, as you guys see the 3D designer, he made a mistake and he put the opening in the middle of the link. You cannot do that. You have to make the opening in this area right here. Right here we have the clasp. Right here we have the box lock. We have the end link for the box lock right here. And right here we have the two pins. All right guys, the next step is to turn our 3D design into wax. We will need two things. The first thing we need is a resin 3D printer such as the Mars Elegoo. And the second thing we need is castable resin. One of the best castable resins is power resins. When you print wax with power resins resin, the wax is very sharp and high definition. This resin is more expensive than other resins on the market. What we will be using in this video is iPhone casting resin. I don't recommend you guys print very detailed pieces with this resin, but if you print things such as Cuban links and other simple stuff like Cuban rings, it will do the job exactly the same as power resins and cost about half the price. I will leave a link to the printer and the resins in the description under the video. Whenever you buy a resin printer such as the Mars Elegoo, it will come with a software called Cheeto Box. Let's open up Cheeto Box and get our files ready for printing. 
All right, guys, so we're going to open up the Chibu Box app and we're going to import our STL files. So we're going to take the file and we're going to drag it into the app. All right, guys, so we're going to click right here, rotate, and we're going to flip it so it stands up straight. After this, we'll move it right here. And if you guys click scale, you guys can resize the files. So right now it's at 100%. If you click 50, it'll be half the size. If you click 150, it will be 150% bigger. So you guys can easily resize your links this way. Let's put it back to 100. So the next step is we're going to add our supports. We're going to click right here. We're going to click the plus sign. And we're going to add our supports right here. We're also going to do the same for the back. And now what we're going to do is we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it. You can do this by pressing Command C and Command V. You're going to do the same thing for the locks. Now I'm not going to waste time showing you how to do the locks. It's pretty self-explanatory. When you guys are finished, you'll click slice. You will wait for it to load all the way. And then what you're going to do is you're going to save the file. You're going to click save right here. And depending on the printer you have, you're going to save it as a CTB or a CBDDLP file. After this, you will take the USB drive that came with the Mars printer and you're going to drag this file onto that drive. Now, one thing before you guys slice the file, you have to click on settings, click on print, and you have to check the resin website to see what numbers you have to plug in here. Every resin is going to be different. We will then pour the resin into the printer and insert the USB drive and print the file. It will usually take a few hours to get the files printed. After you print the files, you will take out the plate and use a spatula to remove the waxes from the plate. You will put the waxes in a cup of alcohol for about a minute and then you will cure them. Now, if you get problems with failed prints and your wax sticks to the clear film, all you have to do is buy this right here and apply it to the bill plate. That's going to solve your problem really fast. Curing means you will expose them to UV light for about an hour. You can cure them on natural sunlight or you can get a UV light such as the one right here. After this, we have to clip all the supports. The Mars Elegoo printer will come with clippers, so you will clip the supports carefully. Remember, don't ever clip too close to the actual model. If you do, you can easily damage it or you can make a hole. It's better to just leave a piece of the support there and use sandpaper to sand it off. Here you guys can see what the links look like when they're clipped. The next step is to turn these waxes into solid gold. This is called casting. Let me explain how casting works. Alright, to make it simple for you guys to understand, pretend you're putting these wax links into very fine wet cement. When the cement dries up, you will pour hot melted gold where the wax is and the wax will simply evaporate and the melted gold will fill the shape of the wax. Once everything is cooled off, the cement is cracked and the gold is taken out. It's that simple. If you live in a large city, there will be a jewelry district which will have casting services that do this for you. You should be paying $1.50 above the spot price for gold. We're going to go to a site called goldcalc.com to find out the current price of gold by carat. So we're going to go on goldcalc.com. We're going to type in 1 gram, 10 carat gold, calculate gold price. And as you guys see, this is the gold price for 1 gram of 10 carat gold. The caster will provide the gold. You do not need to bring in your own gold. You're going to be purchasing the gold from the caster. You will tell the caster two things when you drop off the waxes. The gold color you want to cast in. This can be yellow gold, rose gold, or white gold. And the carat you want to cast in. This can be 10 carat gold, 14 carat, or 18 carat gold. The caster will take about a day or two to cast your waxes into gold. When you guys pick up the gold pieces from the caster, they will look raw and not shiny. Make sure you weigh everything and inspect everything for porosity and any flaws. If there are any holes or porosity, the caster can fix it with a laser machine. So here you guys can see some of the links that we casted. You guys can see the yellow gold links here. And right here you see the white gold and the rose gold links. When these rose gold links are polished, they will look brighter, so don't worry about that. The next thing you will do, which is very important, is weigh everything and write down the total weight. This is important because after the links are polished, the links will weigh slightly less, so it's important to write down the total weight you started with to correctly price your chain or bracelet. Also, you should write out the weight of how much a single link weighs. After this, the next step is to take the links to a polisher and have them file, sand down, and polish your links. They will also solder the links together or they will weld the links together to make an actual chain or bracelet. You will usually pay around $50 for labor to finish the chain or bracelet depending on how many links there are. Bracelets will be cheaper because there are less links, therefore requiring less work. The polisher will take the link that's open and bend it a little bit, and they will then put it inside the closed link and close it up. They will then either weld it or solder it together, and they will continue doing this until the entire piece is finished. You can also have the links welded together using a laser welding machine. There will be people in the district who have these machines. Also, pretty much any jewelry repair store has a machine like this. This is how they repair broken necklaces and other jewelry. After the piece is polished, inspect everything for any defects. If you want to add diamonds, you should have the holes and prongs made on the 3D file. After casting, take the casted piece of the setter and have them confirm what diamond sizes you should buy. Never buy stones prior to checking the holes on the casted link. I made a video on how to buy loose diamonds, you guys can check it out here. 
It will cost you guys $1 to set each stone. You will then do a finishing polish and the piece will be ready. As you guys can see, making chains and bracelets is a very easy process. Let me show you another way to make chains and that's to cast one piece with the open and closed link and the sprue and to make a rubber mold. You will simply cast one of these in the cheap worthless metal such as brass or even silver and instead of cutting the links, you will have a rubber mold made using special jewelry rubber. It will cost around $10 to have a rubber mold made and any caster or bench jeweler can do this for you. You will then have a master rubber mold and you can take it to a caster and tell them how many links you need for your chain or bracelet and they will use their own wax and cast as many links as you need. When they're done, they will return your rubber mold and you can use it anytime you need to make a chain or bracelet with that link size. You guys can make a new rubber mold for each size link. Also make sure you write down how much each link weighs on the rubber mold along with the chain link size. This way it will be easy to calculate approximately how much your chain or bracelet will weigh. Now one more thing you guys need to know about is that most jewelry districts will also have casters that specialize in manufacturing chains. They will usually charge around 3 to 3 dollars per gram on top of the spot price to manufacture chains. The only catch is you will have to buy multiple chains, but this can be very beneficial if you're buying light chains. This is how most jewelry stores in the districts manufacture their chains. Alright guys, real quick let's talk about how to make hollow chains and bracelets. You guys can download a file that's hollow on CG Trader and basically the file will be divided in two halves. You will have a top part and you will have a bottom part. Both of these parts will have to be soldered or welded together. This is popular if customers want to make large pieces but don't want to pay a lot. Also if you guys want to make chains or bracelets with multiple colored links, you will simply cast links in multiple gold colors and you will assemble the chain or bracelet the same way. Just remember you have to plate white gold links white after polishing. If the links are not plated, they will not be bright enough. Alright guys, this next part is very important. You guys have to know your math and exactly how much it costs you to make your chain or bracelet. So say we're going to make a heavy 10 karat bracelet that weighs 100 grams. Let's say the spot price is $25 for 10 karat gold. So with the casting fee, you'll be paying $26.50 a gram. That's $2,650 for the gold and the casting. Say we're going to pay $50 for labor. And also let's say we're going to lose around 2 grams or $50 to polishing. So our total price to make this is going to be $2,750. If you divide that, you're basically paying $27.50 per gram. That's a great price. You're basically paying $2.50 above the spot price. As you guys know, Cuban chains and bracelets usually go for at least $7 on top of the spot price. Now let's do another scenario. Say we're making a light bracelet. Say we're going to make a 10 karat bracelet that weighs 20 grams. So with the casting price, we're paying $26.50 a gram. $26.50 multiplied by 20 grams. That's $530. We're going to add $50 for labor and say we lose one gram, which is $25. So the total is $605. Now let's divide $605 by 20 grams. As you guys see, the total is $30.25. That's definitely a lot and it's not worth it. So what you guys need to do is get these chains made for manufacturers in the district for wholesale prices. You guys have to understand when it makes sense to make a chain yourself and when it makes sense to buy a chain wholesale. If you guys are making heavy pieces, it's almost always worth it to make it yourself. But if you guys are making light pieces, it might make more sense to buy these wholesale from the manufacturers in the jewelry district. Alright guys, now before we end the video, there's one more trick I want you guys to know about, and that's adding diamonds to the lock to increase the price of your bracelet or chain. A lot of people don't know the price of diamonds, and you guys can easily add around 10 stones, which will cost you around $100 to ice out the box clasp. If you guys do this, you can increase the price, and also you'll have a 1-up on your competition. Now, one more thing, I know a lot of you guys don't live near a jewelry district, and that doesn't mean that you can't start a business like this. You will simply have to buy a casting machine and cast the links yourself. Just make sure you do this in a safe environment, this is not something you do inside your house. Also, you won't have to pay anything extra for gold if you do it this way. By the way, if you guys are wondering where to buy raw gold, it's very easy. All you have to do is go on kitco.com and open up a pool account. As you guys can see, one ounce of gold costs $17.61, and the current price of gold is $17.40, so they only charge $20 an ounce, which is nothing. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.